Hello, uh, this is a tutorial on how to make joints drive blend shapes. For example, if I want this character's um, biceps to come out when her elbow bends, we can use this technique. So, say her arm bends, then you can see that her biceps come out to mimic human muscle movement. and. Uh, Basically, you use the node editor and make some connections and some float math to make this work. Uh, I'll go to a previous version of the file to uh, show you the full process. Okay. So right now, first of all, when you want to do this, just make sure that the character is fully properly skinned as best as you can. And then once the character is fully skinned uh, to the best of your abilities, then we can add extra uh, deformations like this. So here I've um, skinned the arm, but I haven't added anything. It's just basic skinning. Now I'm going to add um, blend shape for the arm muscle to come out. So to do that, um, I'm going to select this one, the geometry. Go to deform blend shape, create. Um, now I, oh, shape editor, right. uh, windows, uh, shape editor, yep, animation editor, shape editor, and it's here. Uh, to make it easier for myself, I save the shape editor here in my custom. Uh, toolbar here. So I usually just click on that and it should come up. So for this is the blend shape for the arm geometry. So I'm gonna name it um, left arm, L arm caps lock BLN. And within the L arm blend shape, I'm adding a target. Um, you're able to add multiple targets to one blend shape. So for example, this one. I'm gonna call it um, L arm, or I'm just gonna call it bicep curl target. And under the same uh, arm blend shape, you are able to do multiple targets. For example, if the bicep is coming out when the arm bends this way, when the arm um, straightens, usually the tricep muscles comes out a little bit. So you're able to add another target later on called tricep um, extension target or something like that. Okay, so here, while make sure that the edit is on red, that means it's on edit mode. Then you just select the geometry and do whatever changes you have to do. So um, I selected the two vertices, pressed B for soft selection and I select one of the, or I select the edge in between so that it aligns to the vertices. going to grow the selection a little bit and oh, maybe shrink the selection. Make it come out like that. Okay, so this looks a bit comical, but uh, I'm trying to make it a bit exaggerated so it's more obvious in the tutorial. Um, select the sides and make it come in a little bit. Let's, yeah. I might also bring these ones out as well. It's gone in a little bit too much when the arm has bent. Oh, that looks horrible, but <laughs> just so you get the idea. Okay, alright, so just so it's super obvious, I've made it extra muscular, 
so if you scroll down you can see how it looks without the so I'm gonna hide the joints for a little bit joints so this is how it looks without the blend shape and this is how it looks with the blend shape uh, I'm sure you can do a much better job than this but yeah and I'm gonna click the edit button so that the edit is now disabled so what we wanna do is uh, show joints we want this joint to um, drive this blend target uh, and in order to do that we have to connect it in the node editor so you go to windows um, general editors is it uh, animation oh yep yeah, windows node editor again I've sa saved it in my custom toolbar so that it's easier for me to select so I usually just click on that and it shows up so usually uh, in the node editor there might be stuff already there um, so we want to hide that first of all some basic uh, navigation in the node editor so you scroll the middle mouse bar to zoom in and zoom out then this one with the one play button looking thing that's for input connections so you bring in um, when you bring in uh, an object into the node editor this one means it will show all the connections coming into that object this one is input and output connection so it shows both the input connections coming into the object and the output connections and this one only shows the output connections this one is to add selected notes to the graph or add things to the node editor and this one is to remove things from the node editor this one is to layout so I select everything so I just drag to select everything and then I press this one and it makes everything pretty uh, yeah to make the layout correct so when you want to get rid of stuff from the node editor uh, you don't delete it if you delete it those things will be deleted in the scene you don't want to do that so select everything first of all and then you press the this thing with the minus uh, sign so it just gets rid of it from the node editor now uh, first of all you want to bring the blend shape affecting the bicep so to do that you select the mesh that the blend shape is applied onto and then you press this one to bring it in and as you can see there's a bunch of stuff that we don't need uh, from all this stuff you have to find the one that you named the L arm BLN so uh, I found it here I'm gonna select everything else and then I'm gonna minus it so it goes away I wanna open this up so I select this and then press 3 to open everything up if you press 2 it shows stuff that's only got connections coming in and out if you press 1 it completely collapses it so I'm gonna press 3 next uh, we want to bring in this joint this joint should drive the blend shape so I'm gonna select the joint then I'm going to go to the outliner and then I'm gonna press F so that the joint comes up I'm gonna middle mouse drag it into the node editor and press 3 so here we have the joint and here we have the blend shape that you we want it to be connected to so first of all I'm gonna give it a save it's good to save before making connections just in case you mess up alright so I'll show you what happens if you directly connect the rotation of the joint to the blend shape and uh, something bad happens but I'll show you so you select the plus thing plus sign next to the rotate and there's rotate X, Y, and Z and in the blend shape you have to press the plus on the weight the blend weight which is the target here which we want to connect it to so we first check which axis it's on rotating so as you can see on the right it's rotate Y right? so I'm going to put rotate Y here 
and just to double check just select the joint as well and you can see that rotate Y has the rotation nothing else does okay so what you have to do is select the output of the rotate Y and connect it to the input of bicep curl target and as you can see this is what happens um, and that's because of the unit conversion so uh, to explain it simply it's like um, the joint and the blend shape have different units and Maya does its best to convert the unit so it's the same but the values that you want will not be exactly what you want and it'll cost okay let's see so so I've selected the shape editor and you can see that the blend bicep curl is at minus 75.811 what you ideally want it to be is 1 1 is the value you want here so in order to get that to work we have to use some mats like basic mats and to do that we use float math nodes so I'm gonna control Z all this okay so let me just double check yep it's working fine again okay so instead of directly connecting the elbow joint to the blend shape first you press tab and then type math and two things come up you select float math so I'm gonna press 3 on this I'm gonna name it multiply because multiply function is what we're gonna use for this instance okay and if you select it and then you go to attribute editor you can see here you select instead of add multiply and then you connect the rotate Y to the oh actually no first of all connect the outfloat to the bicep curl outfloat to the bicep curl and then connect the rotate Y to float A and again the same thing happens except this time let me just move this here except this time you can select the multiply node and add a value here so I'm gonna because the the incoming value is negative we want to make it positive alright because we want the blend shape to be 1 maximum should be 1 so I'm gonna make it minus and I'm gonna make it a very small value so that it's not a ridiculous number like minus 76 but you know 0 to 1 okay so I put 0 0.01 uh, and I'm going to go into the shape editor and see so here the maximum is 0 0.765 we want it to reach 1 so instead of I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so that's 1.5 that's a bit too much 0 0.015 might work maybe lesser than that for almost there that's Three, five. I would call this close enough. Um, okay, so this is pretty close enough because we are at 1.071, but you can keep playing around with it till you get the perfect one as well. So this should work. So when you rotate it, okay, let's hide all this stuff. So when you rotate it out, the biceps go in. When you rotate it in, the biceps come out. So it's working. But we're not completely done yet. But I'll just show you how it's working in the shape editor as well. So when you rotate it in, it's okay. It's coming to my 1.2 and everything. But we'll we'll deal with that later. Uh, when it's rotating out, see how the value changes here it's because it's connected to the joint rotation okay so now we have one more problem and it's that if you keep rotating the biceps just like keep coming out so now it's like 1.45 if you keep going the biceps will keep going inwards 
is like minus values. Uh, what I want here is for the blend shape value to be between 0 to 1. And for that, we're again going to use a couple more math nodes, float math nodes. This time, we're going to use the maximum and minimum functions. All right. Okay, so we're back to the node editor. So this part will move to this side. And after the multiply, we're going to add. So multiplication does the main thing of making the value roughly where we want it. Now we want to add the maximum and minimum here. So I'm going to do tab uh, and then math again, float math. I'm going to call this max. And then I'm going to press 3. I'll go to attribute editor. And here it's a bit confusing, but just bear with me. So this is the node where we set the maximum value. But the way Maya works is if you want to set the maximum value, you have to select the minimum operation. Okay? <laughs> so um, to make it easier for myself, I always name it max and then select it minimum. Yeah, just just keep that in mind. So you want the maximum to be 1. So I'm going to select the float A and select connect it to the float A of the max and the out float we connect it back to the blend shape. So now it shouldn't have that issue of it going over 1. So as you can see, no matter how much I bend it in, it'll stay at 1. But yeah, see, it'll always end at 1. There's a cap. But if you keep going this way, it will keep going negative. So to do that, we do the exact um, same thing we did just now, but for a minimum float math. So um, we again make another tab, um, press tab, type in math, select the float math. I'm going to call it min 3 attribute editor. This time, remember the node is named min and we want the minimum value. But in the um, in the attribute editor, we select max. Just forget about this. <laughs> and then in the float B, you select put zero because you want the float B is the minimum value that you want. So it's zero to one. So I put it at zero. Now you connect the outflow to the float A, and you connect the outflow of minimum to the blend weight. So it should theoretically work. I'm going to minimize it. And yeah, so as you can see, um, now that we've connected the min and max float math nodes, uh, when you bend it inwards, no matter how much you bend, the deformation will end at a value of 1 of the blend shape. No matter how much you blend it, uh, bend it outwards, the deformation will end at the value of 0. Yeah, so I'm going to zero that out. Yeah, that's how you connect um, blend shape values to the uh, rotation of joints. Thanks for watching.